Sophie Beebe's bedtime stories are available on the BBC iPlayer app. See Beebe's bedtime story. Well, hi there. I'm Chris. And I love the moon. Do you? You know, sometimes I just like to look up at the night sky and just watch the moon. And can I tell you a secret? Sometimes the moon helps me write songs. Yes, because the moon is magical and mysterious, but it's also welcoming and kind. So here I am by the light of the moon to read you tonight's magical bedtime story. It's called The Moon Keeper, and it's by Zuzhenka. There is a letter addressed to Emil. He's been invited to attend the meeting of the night creatures to hear a very important announcement. The night creatures have chosen him as the new moon keeper. Emil is honored because this is a very important job. So then Emil prepares himself for the task. There are many things he might need for looking after the moon. He climbs 93 steps up the ladder to meet the moon. Up in the sycamore tree, Emil introduces himself. The moon is beautiful and round. Emil has never looked at the moon this way before, and he realizes just how magnificent it is. And for several nights, Emil keeps watch over the moon. You know, he clears some obscuring clouds and tells the fruit bats to move along when they play too close, you know. Shh! Mm. Well, there isn't a lot to do, but Emil finds the moon nice to talk to in the stillness of the night. One evening, he notices something strange. Emil rubs his eyes. Is the moon getting smaller? Well, his neighbor nods in agreement. Yes, indeed, it seems to be shrinking. The change is slight. And to be certain, Emil draws a picture of the moon each night and compares it to the one from the night before. Eh, Emil hadn't imagined a problem such as this. He rummages through his tools and instruments, but there is nothing there to protect the moon from disappearing. Think, 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 thinks Emil. Hmm. Well, have you had enough to eat, Moon? Or are you sad? Maybe the fireflies can cheer you up with a riddle, says Emil. So the fireflies come in. Which fish only swims at night, asks a firefly. A starfish, replies another. Emil giggles at the joke and sees that the moon is smiling too. He phones his cousin in the jungle to find out how the moon looks over there. It isn't good news. Same here, Emil, reports his cousin. The moon grows thinner and thinner until it's no thicker than a thread. A big green bird then lands beside Emil. I've lost the moon, Emil tells the bird. I was supposed to protect it, but I don't know how to make it stay. Watch me, says the bird. It jumps off the roof and flies into the darkness. Emil stares into the night, trying to keep the bird in sight. I'm back, says a voice behind Emil. Things come and go. You'll see, says the bird. And then the moon blinks and vanishes. The night is dark, but Emil pictures the moon in his mind and repeats the words of the big green bird until he falls asleep. Things come and go. And when Emil wakes up, there is a new smile in the sky. You're back, he whispers. And each night, the moon grows bigger and bigger until 
It feels the sky again. I think Emil did a great job of looking after the moon. Can you see the moon tonight? Can you? Maybe it hangs big in the night sky, or maybe it's hidden behind the clouds. Well, if you can see the moon or not, I think we should say a big thank you to Emil for looking after it. Thank you, Emil. You rock! And now, under a blanket of the moon and stars, it's time for you to get some sleep. And I'll be back soon to read you another CBeebies bedtime story. Good night, my friends. Good night. Bedtime Stories is the perfect way to end the day. And you can watch more celebrity readers on CBeebies Bedtime Stories on BBC iPlayer.